Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. It is finally summertime and I know a lot of you guys watching are on your summer break and that usually means that you are bored. <laughs> so you have come to the right place. I have come up with a few fun activities and things you can try, things you can do over the summer when you get bored. For this video, I have teamed up with Mako from Mako Chino. She's also doing a video full of things that you can do when you get bored. Hey guys, my name is Mako from the channel Mako Chino. On my channel, I encourage creativity and inspire you guys to be creative, to express yourself in your own unique way. And in my video, I'm going to show you different creative things that you can do if you feel bored at home. They're all fun and easy to make and I hope you enjoy them. I love her channel and if you haven't checked it out, definitely go do so and subscribe. And I will also put her video to all of the things you can do when you get bored in the description below. You can also check it out at the end of this video. Some of the things I show you in this video, I actually did when I was a kid, when I was bored over summer. I realize not all of you watching are on summer break, but whether you're a kid, a parent of kids, or a kid at heart, you can have fun making these no matter what age you are. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Sea Lemon. I make something new every week, so don't miss any of my videos and be sure to subscribe. I have over 200 videos on my channel, so I have so many other ideas that you can do and projects you can try if you are bored. Definitely go check out my videos on my channel. Also hit that like button and tell me in the comments below which of these things is your favorite to do when you get bored. What do you like to do when you get bored? Share it in a comment below and let's get to it. If you're outside during summer, try some scribble chalk art. I'll be using washable sidewalk chalk and this is a really fun thing to do outside with your friends, two-legged or four-legged. And if you can't think of something to draw, here is where the scribbles come into play. On your sidewalk canvas, make some curvy, wavy lines and there is no way to mess this up and then fill in the shapes made by the intersecting lines with your choice of color. It's fun to fill in the different shapes, and whatever you make will look like an abstract piece of art. This project is based on my previous video on relaxing art, and I just made a scribble art on a piece of paper, which you can also do. It is relaxing, and as you can see, Kona is clearly relaxed. It could be fun if you have friends fill in the different shapes with you, and it's just a fun thing to do to pass the time. And I think the sidewalk and the whole patio would look so cool if it was covered in this entire pattern. If you're traveling or going outside, another thing you can try is a color scavenger hunt book. I'll be using letter size paper in a variety of colors. You can also use white paper and fill in the colors you want to search for. And I'll be using the white paper for the front and back cover. And the size of the paper is really up to you. You want to fold each sheet in half, and each page folded in half will be its own spread of that color that you search for. And for the items that you find in your hunt, you can use resealable clear bags. If you don't know what a scavenger hunt is, usually you get a list of things to search for, and then you go outside and find those things. In my day, we actually went to people's houses and asked if they had that item. Do not do that, uh, stranger danger. For this game, you just want to go out and search for the different colors that match your paper. This is a great excuse to get outside, walk your dog, hang out with your friends, and it's a fun game to search for the different colors. You want to search for things that you can take that are free, and you can put your found objects in the baggie and place it into that color spread. This can also be a fun way to catalog memories from a trip. For example, you can put a label or a piece of recycled paper next to the color, and you can also write about it in that page. And on the front and back cover pages, you could explain the trip that you took or just write about the story behind all of the colors that you searched for. I'm going to give this book a title, which is The Color Scavenger Hunt, and then write the year. And decorating it with different color markers to show the colors that I searched for. To bind the whole book, I'm using binder clips, and this is a really easy way to bind any book. Stack all the pages together so they are aligned evenly, and then slip on the binder clips on the folded edges. You can leave the arms of the clips on if you want to, or if you want a cleaner look, you can simply take them off. And just know if you ever want to move around your pages or get the baggies out or your objects out, you can easily put the arms back on and remove the binding. When you first open the book, you may have to press it down a little, but it will wear in. And I made sure to put the closure of the baggie toward the folded edge so that it will stay put in the book. 
This can be a really fun color study and it's fun to flip through the pages to kind of reminisce about the things that you saw and collected. Next, here's a fun twist on a very popular DIY, which is making your own slime. If you're new to the slime trend, it's pretty easy to make. You can use five ounces of non-toxic glue. I'm using clear here. And to color it, you can add food coloring or acrylic paint. I used clear glue because I'm making a popsicle and I wanted it to be more transparent, but turns out the paint is more opaque, so it actually turned out a solid orange. You want to stir your glue and paint color of your choice together, and then add a half cup of liquid starch. Some of you have said in the comments to add it slowly for better results, so I tried that, but honestly I didn't really see a difference, so you could kind of dump the whole thing in if you want to. Mix that all together, and then add a fourth cup of water. Mix that in, and you want to keep stirring until you can really see the slime form, and you can also go in and knead it with your hands until all of the moisture is kind of gone, and you kind of end up with this gooey slime that doesn't stick to your fingers. You could just play with this basic slime right here when you're bored, but I wanted to add a summer vibe to it, so I'm going to make this into a melted looking popsicle. Place it on a non-stick surface and add popsicle sticks. You can make it look more like a popsicle by shaping it with your hands like this. Place the popsicle sticks underneath and fool your friends into thinking this is a melted, slimy looking popsicle. This popsicle is made for playing with, not eating, so in case you haven't figured that out by now, don't eat it. This has no other real purpose than to just look weird and you can play with it when you're bored over the summertime. If you're looking for more weird slime ideas, I have a video that I made a while ago. You can check that out up here and I will also put that down below. If you want to save your slime, you can keep it in a baggie with a closure so that it doesn't dry out. Another thing you can try is making a friendship bracelet. I'll be using five different colors of craft thread and one button for the closure. You can use as many different colored strands as you'd like and I'm making each of them about two to three feet long. And you'll want to keep the thread that is for the button a little bit longer. This will give you extra room to make the loop which goes around the button. Trim all of the thread, and for the button closure, you can tie a knot on that piece of thread, leaving a loop that is large enough to fit around the button. Now gather all of the thread ends together and tie a knot on the end. You can trim off the excess thread, leaving the loop for the closure. Now to hold the thread, you can use a piece of tape on a tabletop. You can also use a clipboard. And when I was a kid and I made these, I actually put it in my dresser drawer and I used that as a clamp. Separate the strands so you have the colors in the order that you want. I'll be using what is called the four knot for this, which I didn't know that when I was a kid. I don't even know where I learned how to do this. I just did it and I picked it up from my friends maybe. The goal is to get that first strand knotted across all of the colored strands until you get it to the end, and you want to knot each strand twice. So this green strand is going on all of the other strands, knotting twice until it gets to the end of the row of colors. And you're always pulling the strand on top of the other strand, making a four, like I mentioned, and going around it to make the knot and then pulling it closer to the top of the bracelet. Don't forget to make two knots on each strand. Now that the green is the last in line, now I'm going to move on to the next color, which is first, which is the blue. And I'm going to go along just as I did with the green, along each strand, making two knots on each. So I'm making that four shape and knotting it along the second strand, which is the purple, knotting it twice, until it gets to the very end. And you'll repeat that process, always getting the first strand along all of the colors until it reaches the end. Once you get going, it's really easy to get the hang of it. And if the four thing isn't working for you, I also think a thumbs up could be a good way to remember it. Just remember you're always crossing over the strand to the right. And you'll see your bracelet starting to form. This is called a candy stripe bracelet. I actually didn't know that. As a kid, I just made these and they were just considered like the basic friendship bracelet. 
When your bracelet is at a good length, you can test it on your own wrist to see if it's long enough, and if this is for a larger wrist, you can just keep knotting and keep making it longer. I think this is a good point to stop and I'm going to knot the end. You can tie it to the other end in a knot if you just want to skip the button closure, but if you want this to be removable, you can add the button along two of the pieces of thread on the end, tie those together over the button. You can also tie it in a knot on top, but I decided to put those two pieces toward behind the button and tie a knot back there so it's not showing on the top and I'm going to double knot it to make sure it's secure. Trim off the excess thread, and now you have a friendship bracelet that you can keep for yourself if you want to, or you can give it to your friend. I'm going to keep this one for myself. I actually like how it turned out, and this is my new favorite bracelet. You can try different colors and add more pieces of thread to make a wider bracelet. This is something really easy to make when you get bored, and once you get going, you can just whip them out and you can make multiples, and they make great gifts. I hope you try one of these things out to squash your boredom over the summer, and tell me which one was your favorite in the comments below. Also be sure to follow me on my social links. If you make any of these projects, I would love to see your pictures, so share those with me and add a hashtag lemon. I also made a playlist full of my top picks of things to do when you get bored, and similar to this video, they only require a few things that you might already have around the home, so check that playlist out right here, and also be sure to check out Mako's video right here. Links will be down below and be sure to subscribe to my channel for a new video every week. I will see you next week. Bye!